Algebra 1, Section 1-4. I decided to just type the notes out here on a Word document. Uh, uh, I think you should write these down, but uh, that's, that's kind of up to you. Uh, I'm going to talk about functions today. A function, here's a definition. A function is a relationship that assigns exactly one output value for each input value. So it's a um, relationship between two variables, of course, in algebra, that's what that's going to be. And uh, it's like it's like the situation. And then next definition, a function rule is an equation that describes a functional relationship. Now, when we get into this and we're writing functions in Algebra 1, we, we sort of blur the lines between these two words, and you'll just be writing a function, you know, and there's function notation. But really, technically, th these definitions are correct. And I uh, noticed that I color-coded as well uh, input and output. Input is in red and output is in green. And the reason for that is, and I'll talk about uh, the other two, you know, comparisons below uh, after we do a couple of examples, but they go together. In input goes along with the independent variable, which goes along with the domain. Output goes along with the dependent variable, which goes along with the range. And you could even throw in the common variables that we use there, X and Y. Domain is X, range is Y. The independent variable is often X and the dependent variable is often Y. Uh, we don't have to use X and Y, but when we do, X is the independent one and Y is the dependent one because X is the input and Y is the output, okay? So that's that. We'll come back to this to talk about it after we do a few examples. Uh, here's an example. It says, suppose you're buying apples from a vending machine. I have to say, I've never seen that vending machine. Have you ever seen an apple vending machine? Anyway, it says, uh, use the table to write a function rule. Now, whether it's apples or... Um, you know, cars or whatever, uh, what we really should be looking at is the table itself. And it's it's good to pick, like I've talked before, it's, it's good to pick variables that uh, go along with what they stand for. So how about N for apples, or you could use A and C for cost. Those will be my two variables. Now think about this. Even I'll even talk about it right now that, you know, what what quantity would be independent here and what quantity would be dependent? Do you search out how much money you have in your pocket and then decide how many apples you're going to buy? That's not usually the situation. You go, you're going to buy an apple, or maybe you're going to buy an apple for yourself and an apple for your friend, or maybe you're going to buy apples for the whole table, and that's that's going to determine the amount of money you're going to spend. Apples is independent. Cost is dependent. Okay, So uh, with that in mind, we can write this for the cost in terms of the number of apples. The cost is 35 cents or 0.35 n okay and that should work for each one of these ordered pairs if i plug one in here 0.35 times one is 35 cents if i plug two in you'd get 0.7 or 70 cents if you plug three in, you'll get a dollar five you plug four and you'll get a dollar 40. hey if you buy zero apples you spend zero dollars and zero times 0.35 would give you zero of course so that's a function uh, basically the same type of example, but slightly more complicated. Uh, don't worry about what it says about the toothpick houses. That's, that can be a little bit confusing. Let's just look at the numbers. Uh, again, I'll use N for number of houses and T for total toothpicks. Um, I'll give you a little hint too. Usually when it's in a table, it's the second quantity that's the dependent quantity. So you can kind of look for that. T toothpicks here is going to be the dependent quantity. It's going to be T equals something in terms of N. Um, if it's a vertical T chart, you know, we usually do, if we use X and Y, X comes first, right? So it's the, the second quantity that's dependent on the first quantity. Uh, you know what I'm saying? If the T chart is this way, X is independent, Y is dependent. Um, notice that this is going up by sixes. Six more, six more, six more. In, uh, a pre, in another chapter, chapter that's coming up uh, about mid-year, we'll call that number the slope, okay? Just thought I'd tell you now, though. And uh, that slope is 6 uh, because it's the rate of change, okay? As number of toothpicks, or excuse me, as number of houses goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, we're going up by 6. 7 to 13 to 19 to 25 is going up by 6. So one thought then would be to go, okay, T equals 6N, right? Because as I go up 1 for the 1, it's a multiplier of 6 of that number, okay? So if I plug 1 in here, uh, I'd get six. If I plug two in here, I'd get 12. That's six more. If I plug three in here, I'd get 18. That's six more. 
Uh, there's a problem with this, though, is that it's not producing the output that is here, 7, 13, 19, 25. So what we want to do is just adjust that up, because did you notice that as I was saying those numbers, they're all one less than the actual output, the actual total toothpicks. So all we need to do is adjust that up one, 6n plus 1. Let's test it out. 1, if I plug it in for n, 1 times 6 plus 1 would be 7. 2, plug it in, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 was 13, that number. Um, 3, plug it in, 18 plus 1 is 19. It's working. Okay, now back to our notes. Um, I, I already kind of talked about this, independent variable, dependent variable. Um, this is just kind of where I have it placed in my notes. Uh, in, a, in a function, you're going to have two variables. One of them is likely to be dependent on the other. And it really uh, is regarded by situation, if you're given a situation like we were in the first example, uh, or sometimes it's even by the structure of the e equation itself. If we just gave you an equation and it was y equals 5x minus 2, I would assume that y is the dependent variable because what do we like to do is plug values in for x and do the math on that side and then that shows you what the y is actually equal to. I don't know if that really makes sense on that description, but uh, uh, I can show you some of that in, in class as well. Um, and I might as well just go ahead and talk about domain and range now too since, uh, since I, so I don't have to keep clicking back and forth. Domain is the set of all possible inputs. The range is the set of all possible outputs. Here's the most important thing I think I could tell you about domain and range besides the definition, and that is that they're singular, okay? Domain is one thing, it's the entire set of inputs. Range is one thing, it's, and it's the entire set of outputs. It's kind of like saying the freshman class, right? There's one freshman class. There may be 300 and some of you in the freshman class, but there's, there's a freshman class. It's kind of like that, right? Uh, the domain could be, you know, three numbers or 50 numbers or infinitely many numbers, but it's one single domain. So never, never give me an answer that says something about multiple domains and multiple ranges. Uh, we'll ask you the question, it probably is even in the homework that says, you know, is this a function? And I'll sometimes get the erroneous answer. Uh, yes, it is because for every domain, there's exactly one range. Well, that doesn't make sense because there aren't multiple domains and ranges. Uh, the correct answer to that question, by the way, is uh, yes, because there is exactly one output assigned to each input. Um, uh, or no, because there's not. So again, domain and range, they're, they're sets of numbers, usually more than one, sometimes infinitely many. Domain goes with the X, goes with the independent variable, that's the input. Range is the output, the dependent variable, oftentimes the variable is Y when we're using X and Y. All right, so back to a couple more examples and that'll wrap up the lesson. It says, suppose you wanna find out how much gas a trip will take in a car that uses one gallon of gas to go about 18 miles. What are the independent and dependent quantities? By the way, uh, I didn't put this on the notes sheet, but I often will um, abbreviate independent, independent variable. It says quantity here, but independent variable is IV, the dependent variable is dv because I really don't like writing out independent variable, dependent variable. So that's a, a common abbreviation for those. Anyway, let's look at their situation. Uh, you, you got a trip. Let's put a number to it, too. You're going to take a trip uh, to Lansing, which is about 50 or 60 miles and, and back again. So let's say you're going to go. I'm just going to pick a number 110 miles. You want to know how much gas it takes in a car that gets about 18 miles to the gallon. Which one is dependent on the other? I'm going to say the answer now, so if you want more time to think, pause the video. The one that is dependent on the other is the gas is dependent on the miles, right? You want to go to Lansing. You don't care how much gas you're going to put in there, whether it's a couple gallons or a couple more than a couple gallons uh, to get there. You want to, you, you want to get there. And uh, therefore, the amount of gas that you use is dependent on the trip. If we were going longer, we'd use more gas. Okay. You, you, to say that differently, you wouldn't uh, just say, well, I, I want to go to Lansing, but I can only spend money on three gallons of gas. And let's just see how far that gets me to Lansing and, you know, maybe part of the way back and then you're going to get stuck. Right. So that's not the way it works. The dependent quantity is gallons of gas. The independent, independent quantity that the dependent quantity is dependent on the independent quantity is the miles that the trip would take.
Let's take another example and uh, talk about domain and range specifically. Ken burns 425 calories per hour when he bikes. He bikes from three to seven hours each weekend. Identify the independent and dependent quantities for this situation and find a reasonable domain and range. Okay, so again, I'm about to say what's dependent on the other. If you want a little time to think, pause it. Um, calories burned would be dependent on how many hours he bikes, right? It's not the other way around. You know, the hour, the number of hours he bikes is not dependent on the calories he burns. No, he decides how many uh, hours he's going to bike. You know, it's something between three and seven. If it's four, then he knows that he's going to burn four times 425 calories. I, I think that would be 1,700 if uh, my mental math is correct. If he bikes five hours, he's going to burn more calories, another 425. If he bikes six hours, it's even more. If he bikes seven, it's even more. If he bikes eight, well, that's not even in this situation, is it, right? That's outside of the domain, okay? So we would say calories is the dependent variable. Um, hours is the independent variable. We could even assign a, a function to this, although we already practiced that, so I won't do that now. And then let's talk about the domain and range. So hours would have to do with domain. The domain can be expressed as an inequality, and here's how we do this. We like to put it in the braces like this, and I'll call it the variable H that we're going to use. And then we always put a, like a vertical line here just to kind of separate that off. And H is between three and seven inclusive of three and seven. So three is less than or equal to H is less than or equal to seven. We express it like an inequality, right? The amount of hours that he bikes is something between three and seven and it's inclusive of three. So I have or equal to, it's inclusive of seven. So I have uh, or equal to here as well. This is how we can show that. You could also use the word and. You could say H is greater than or equal to 3 and H is less than or equal to 7. But this is a convenient way to do that. Um, the range, and I want to I show them in order. So let me put this down here. The range, because we always say domain and range. We don't say range and domain. That even sounds weird to say. The range has to do with calories. And uh, I'm going to have to grab a calculator just to make sure I don't give you the wrong numbers. I think I just did it correctly in my head anyway, but... Um, the range will say C for calories, and it's something between 3 times 425, which is 1275. The variable goes in the middle there, and 7 times 425, which is 2975. Because he can bike something between three and seven hours, he's going to burn something between 1,275 and 2,975 calories. Okay, hope that makes sense. Uh, come with good questions to class the next day if you have, have them regarding these, this or any other example. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.